Today I want to talk to you about how you as an ordinary Rotarian can do extraordinary things through the power and the leverage of Rotary. Because you are the power of one. Almost every program we see in Rotary today was started by a Rotarian in a Rotary Club who planted the seeds and those seeds grew to become projects all around the world. You see, Rotary is not an A-shaped pyramid structure like we see in the business. I believe Rotary is an inverted pyramid. It's an upside-down organization with the members of every Rotary Club at the top of our Rotary International organization, followed by the uh, club president and the directors in the club, then the governor and the assistant governors around the districts, and at the very bottom we have our Rotary International president, our Rotary International Board of Directors and our trustees for the foundation. It is you as the Rotarian that is at the top of this organization. All of these programs you see here were started by Rotarians who planted seeds in their local community Rotary clubs. I don't have time to go into each of them in detail today, but we're gonna focus mainly on Rotary's contributing founders for the United Nations. Back in 1945, it was 49 Rotarians who participated at the United Nations Charter Meeting in 1945. Many of us maybe know this part of the history, but several don't understand the reason why Rotary got invited to these meetings to begin with. And that was started by a Rotarian in Nashville, Tennessee, who had an idea of promoting Rotary International Institute of understanding. And these events spread to Houston, they spread to Dallas in Texas. In fact, they spread to over 2,000 locations around the world where country statesmen, prime ministers and premiers, and uh, all of the senior level government dignitaries knew Rotary for this initiative promoting the idea of international understanding and world peace. So when President Roosevelt and Winston Churchill had the idea of convening a meeting to develop the United Nations, they said, we need to have Rotary there because they are already doing a lot of what we hope that the UN might accomplish in the future. And that, my friends, is why we were at the in San Francisco. But Rotarians did much more than just attend the meetings. Well before those meetings in 1945, the call went out around the Rotary world for Rotarians and Rotary clubs to give input as to what we thought might be good input for the meetings that the Rotarians were attending. In fact, we had a conference at a location called Dumbarton Oaks, which resulted in this document on the left being published, containing all of the input and the ideas that Rotarians had around the world to contribute to the San Francisco meeting. And then after the meeting in San Francisco, where the charter document was written, and by the way, the first draft of the UN Charter was written by a Rotarian in South Africa, Rotary International published a document called From Here On. And on the right side of the page was the charter uh, content, and on the left side of each page was the input and the commentary by the Rotarians regarding each paragraph of the charter. So that uh, was to promote Rotarians around the world to get engaged and help uh, get the United Nations and the charter and purpose of the UN uh, promoted within Rotary. When you walk the hallways of Rotary, and by the way, you have official status at the UN, the senior leaders of Rotary consider us our partnership arrangement with them. They see us as a leading NGO, and they are impressed by our action, how we put traction to the road to make things happen. And largely because of our polio initiative, they say, we need to listen to you. You've already arranged for a ceasefire for a day to go in and inoculate children against polio. You already arranged a ceasefire for a weekend in the Tamil Tiger area, in a war-torn area. So please, please help us arrange a ceasefire for a week. Please help us arrange a ceasefire for a month. 
please help us arrange a ceasefire for a year because you've already proven that you know how to get that job done. The, lo the leaders at the United Nations also ask us to do these things. They hope that we can continue to create public awareness about all of the global issues. They hope we can strengthen and scale up our already successful programs through our Rotary Foundation. They hope that we can build more capacity in our focus area of literacy and education because those of us in international development know that it is the literacy and education that acts as a pathway from poverty for many of these people. They also hope that we can continue with our exchange programs to promote tolerance and respect around the world. And lastly, but likely most importantly, they're hoping we can demand accountability from each of our governments and our service providers around the world. Because too many times state leaders come out of G20 summit meetings or other United Nations meetings and they say what they think the TV cameras want to hear in terms of their pledges and the action steps they're going to be taken. But then they go home and they do very little. And currently most countries around the world aren't even coming to half of what they dedicated themselves to do in the area of international service globally. So we need to hold our governments more accountable. When you think of it, uh, the first draft of the UN Charter was written by a Rotarian and uh, the Sustainable Development Goals have also had input from Rotary. And so the, the areas of focus of Rotary are very similar to the UN Sustainable Goals. So we both have the same end result in mind. We are both on the same track to accomplish the same things to make the world a better. So how can we do this through Rotary? Well, at the Rotary International uh, level, we are trying to build better, more solid relationships with these UN affiliates from all the, around the world. We're trying to be more than the sum of our parts by joining together and working on projects in harmony. What you can do locally is get engaged uh, at the local level to support the UN. Uh, one of the most popular ones is the MUNAS, the Mock United Nations Assemblies, where we have debates at high school, college, and university levels. Students are assigned uh, countries in teams. And by the way, they often come uh, to the debates dressed in the cultural uh, dress of the countries they represent and uh, they discuss the issues on the current floor of the UN General Assembly. There is an organization called WFUNA, World Federation of United Nations Assemblies, which is an umbrella over uh, the country association. So in my case I'm affiliated with the Canada UN Association, but they also have one in the US with chapters all across each country in the major cities. So you can support the model UNs. You can use your Rotary Foundation projects to help reach the sustainable development goals. You can network with the local affiliates and uh, look up a chapter in your city. They would be more than excited to have Rotarians join their group. And often they have monthly or bi-monthly meetings to promote the United Nations SDGs. Of course, we want to continue our exchange programs and do whatever we can to promote and hold our governments to be accountable they're making for international development. So you have a Rotary toolbox. We have scholarships that send people abroad every year, the World Peace Scholarship, the Ambassadorial Scholarship. Uh, we have our Rotary Foundation programs that I don't have time to go into. We have our Rotary Network where we have 1.2 million friends all around the world to uh, share information with and, and uh, get to know each other with, our exchange programs, our United Nations Rotary Friends on Facebook. In fact, there's a group on Facebook called United Nations Rotary Friends. Please go join them and get more involved. And of course, we have our matching global grants. So let's take a look at how our grants uh, help on projects around the world and uh, go from there. If I was with you in person, I would do a, a live magic show on stage, 
but because I'm not able to be with you in person, I'm going to share with you a short video showing you how simple it is to do a global grant. So you'll see a lady come up on the stage and she's donating $5 from her club. Through magic tricks, I turn that $5 into two $5 bills equaling $10. Then from the gentleman who donated $10 to the Rotary Foundation, he made an investment in helping make a difference. And I take that $10 and through my magic Rotary Foundation printing press, I print off a $20 bill from his $10 bill to show the magic of our matching grants. So please enjoy this little show. Do I have anybody in the audience who would be willing to donate uh, or contribute $5 to the Rotary Foundation? Okay, ma'am. Come on up with your $5. While she's coming up, do I have anybody who would invest $10 in the foundation? Understanding, of course, sometimes investments do carry an element of risk. Okay, we got a fellow here. Okay. Come on up, sir, with your money. And uh, I'm just going to show you very quickly how simple it is to do a foundation matching grant. Okay, so we've got $5. Your club, ma'am? Dearborn Heights. Dearborn Heights. Thank you so much. So the Dearborn Heights Club want to do a project, and they've got $5. And what are they going to do, assuming they've got the paperwork all done, they've got the partner, what is the thing that they want to do? What are they gonna, what's the first step once they've got the paperwork done? Submit it to the district for DDF match if, if the district has budget to do that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the $5. Okay, you want to just hold that? Now, for those of us who go on the road, we have special magic grant uh, tricks, okay? <laughs> so we got an empty bag here. And we're going to put that money in the bag, send it off to your district. Your district fairly uh, prompt in responding oh, yeah. to the grant request, okay? So let's see what they responded. What, what have you got? <laughs> so is that a good return on our investment so far? <laughs> so that's all. That's all for you. It's all for you. Well, okay. We to the okay. Just put it in the bag there. <laughs> Okay, so we've got now $5 from the club, $5 from the DDF budget in their district, which is $10. Okay, now this is one that I bet you none of our, even our Rotary Foundation people have that just came from Evanston. But uh, those of you who are allowed into the basement in the Evanston office know that we've got a big printing press there that prints all the money for the grants. <laughs> And, and so when we go out and do projects, they just give us these little printing presses so that we can do the grants right on the spot. You have one of these, right, Steph? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take $10, okay? We're going to send that to Rotary Foundation in Evanston. We're going to ask them to match our grant, right? So tell the folks what you might have there. Is that a good return on your investment? Yes, it is. My friends, where can you put money into your favorite charity and get a 400% return on your investment? So that just shows you the great return on the investment that you get through Rotary Foundation. And my friends, we do need support to our Rotary Foundation because after all, that is the financial engine that drives all of our projects around the world. We do great things in Rotary, but it takes donations from Rotarians and friends and clubs to make the wheels go round and get that traction that I talked about earlier. So my friends, you are the power of one. I hope I've showed you some quick examples of how you can truly make a difference in our troubled world through the ideas and the projects that you share with your fellow members and the great work that you continue to do in your Rotary Clubs and in your districts, both locally through community and, of course, around the world with global projects. Thank you so much for your attention. And please uh, congratulate Rotary. Congratulate the United Nations on 75 years of service to mankind.